Pedro Hailbron is the current Chief Executive Officer and Director of Copa Holdings SA, the parent company of Copa Airlines and Copa Airlines Columbia. Since he was appointed CEO in 1988, Mr. Hailbron has transformed Copa from a regional operation to one of the most influential and profitable carriers in Latin America. The airlines currently serve 46 destinations and 24 countries. From 2004 to 2006, and again in 2008, Skytrax awarded Copa the title of Best Airline in Central America, Mexico, and the Caribbean, and Best in Flight. In November of 2010, the Star Alliance announced that Copa would be joining its ranks. In recognition for his outstanding work as CEO, Pedro Helbron has received several professional awards. In 2006, Mr. Helbron earned Latin Trade's Bravo Award for Best CEO, and two years later, the Panamanian Association of Corporate Executives named him Executive of the Year. This was followed in 2009 by the prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award from the Airline Business Magazine for his contributions to the growth of the airline industry in Central and South America. He has served three separate terms as the president of the Latin American Airline Association and is a former board member of the Board of Governors of IATA. Mr. Helbron received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics from the College of the Holy Cross and an MBA from George Washington University. He last spoke at the Wings Club in June of 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pedro Helbron back to our podium. We're thrilled to have him. Thank you, Dave, and good afternoon to all. I think the, the kind of the best award in this industry is just surviving and being here. So, so I don't know if I'm just under the radar or maybe we're doing well. Obviously, that's no guarantee that I'll be here tomorrow. So hopefully I'll be back in four years, but who knows? Uh, a lot has happened in the last four years, and, and maybe some of what I'm going to talk about will be familiar uh, to many of you. Uh, some of the stuff will be new, and I'll try to uh, talk also about how much we've changed in at least well in the past five years. Uh, and by the way, I'm not big on speaking engagements. I brought uh, some notes, and then the, we'll, we'll have time at the end for Q&A, which maybe will be more interesting. Uh, um, but you know, the real reason I'm here is that Marlin here, Marlin Daly from Boeing, promised better delivery slots. I spoke <laughs> so. Better delivery slots and a free lunch, you know, it's, 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 it's hard, hard to say no. Plus New York City, no rain for the time being, so it's, it's, it's great. And uh, no, but seriously, it's, been a, it's actually been a very, it's been a great and exciting week for Copa Airlines. We've made an, a number of announcements uh, this week that, that I think uh, are put puts us in a very strong and competitive position in Latin America. Just two days ago, we grew our hub, what we call the hub of the Americas in Panama, in Panama City, for, from four to six connecting banks. And in the US, when you have very large hubs like Chicago or, or Houston or even New York here, talking about going from four to six banks might not seem like a huge deal. But Latin America has never seen connectivity like what we're offering uh, out of Panama. And our competitors, which are also trying to grow their own hubs, are at best somewhere between two and three connecting banks. So to us in Panama, this is a really big deal. We also announced four new destinations. Actually, we inaugurated four new destinations. Uh, two days ago, we started flights from uh, Panama to Nassau in the Bahamas. Uh, so that's our 11th city in the Caribbean, more than from any other uh, country in Latin America. We also inaugurated Toronto uh, yesterday, Toronto, Canada, our first flight to Canada, and two more cities in Brazil, Brasilia and Porto Alegre. We're, also, we're right now serving six cities in Brazil, connecting them through Panama uh, with, the, with the America. We also announced this past Monday, three new destinations, which we'll start flying in December. Uh, Cúcuta in Colombia is the ninth city, the ninth Colombian city that we connect via our hub in Panama. Also, Asuncion in Paraguay, which was the only, Paraguay was the only country, Spanish-speaking country in Latin America that Copa was not serving. And Chicago, Illinois, our sixth city 
in the U.S. We're going to have, a, as of December, something like 12 daily flights from Panama to the U.S., serving six different cities, including obviously JFK here in New York. And as I mentioned before, when, when we compare uh, our, our service to the, to the uh, companies, to the airlines that compete with us in Latin America, uh, there's a huge gap and, and we're kind of happy to be able to expand uh, on it. I'm going to touch upon our business model. Some of you are familiar with it, but it's, it's a big part of why we're being why we're able to add so many cities and, and, and actually by going to six banks, we're also adding frequencies, daily frequencies to many of the currently served destinations. Uh, this hub concept for us starts in 1992. I'm going to explain everything that happened in between, but in 1992, other carriers in Latin America had only one thing in their mind, surviving the competition that American Airlines had brought in two years before between Miami and Latin America. At that point, you know, we said, forget it, we're not going to compete with American and everything they bring to the game back then. We're going to focus on something totally different, intra-Latin America traffic. No one was serving that, that market, and back then it was nearly impossible to travel from somewhere in South America to Central America or the Caribbean. The only way was going up to Miami, and there weren't that many flights. You needed a U.S. visa, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, those markets were totally underserved. And we concentrated, started in, in, 92, in 92 with uh, on building the, the intra-Latin America hub, which up to this point is still the leading intra-Latin America hub. The other thing that happened is that, again, we kind of was, we were staying away from American, but the world was changing. Globalization was setting in. In Latin America, uh, uh, open skies were the new norm. There, were, there was access to more liberal uh, aviation agreements. Plus, the U.S. carriers, like American, were expanded. So we decided then that it was not enough uh, to be a, an okay, maybe a good regional carrier, and slowly build a intra-Latin America hub. We had to speed up that process, but we also needed to become a world-class carrier. We needed to team up, that was our decision, to a, with a bigger and better airline. And we found back then in 1988 the right partner, a partner that we were not in competition with that had the right people, the right business model, and uh, those were, they, uh, that partner was Continental Airlines, which in 90, 1988 bought 49% of the company, and we entered into a comprehensive alliance like no one has ever done in Latin America to this day. One pass became our frequent flyer, flyer program, still to this day. We share livery, similar livery offices, uh, and a bunch of other things. And obviously that partner is now the much larger, stronger, uh, but just as good United Airlines. So now we have an either, even bigger partner than what we bargained for at the beginning, which is all positive. Uh, with that partnership came the 737 Next Generations, which also play a, a, a key role in, in what we did. Because Panama is in the middle of the Americas. If there's, you can buy very nice planes, but geography you cannot buy. And we have the best geography. But we needed a plane that could fly nonstop to almost anywhere in the Americas and anywhere in South America. And the only plane that could do that Still, the only narrow body plane that could do that, still to this day, was the 737 Next Generation, the 700s and, and the 800s. And why narrow bodies are important, we're serving, we're tying together thin markets. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a minute, why, why this whole narrow, uh, narrow body, thin market uh, thing is very important. So in, in 05, we went public in the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, that's been a, a good thing, even though our competitors did have access to our numbers once we went public. We saw how good our business model was, and since, since then, they've been doing more of what we do. But still, Panama has an advantage. Uh, but at uh, the beginning, I was saying what has changed, how much we've changed from uh, 2007 uh, or 2005 when we went public to now, so let's talk about the last five years. And I'm 
Well, maybe I can find, uh, I think I have sp uh, specific numbers somewhere. So uh, in terms of, of traffic, fleet, fleet went from 24 airplanes in 05 to 73 at the end of this year. Uh, departures have doubled from 49 to more than 90. Operating revenues in those five years went from 600 million to more than 1.6 this year. Uh, and then operating income, net income, it all either double or triple, net income triple. And luckily the stock price also triple, so, so investors are not asking for my head, which is, <laughs> which is very important. <laughs> to some of them, that's probably number one. <laughs> so we've had good grow, growth. This business model has worked. Uh, it still works, still very valid. Uh, we're aided by other, there are other factors that are helping us along the way, Beha besides the geography of Panama, having the right business model. Uh, Latin America, I think it's, a, it's also a, a, a great story. In 10 years, probably, we've gone from one of the weakest regions of the world in terms of GDP growth, airlines, etc., to the place to be. Uh, and uh, growth in Latin America, it's forecasted by, I, by the IMF to, uh, to be among the fastest. I think it's Asia and Latin America. Uh, last year, uh, Latin America grew over 4%. It's, it's projected to grow also over 4% this year. Panama is doing even better. Panama grew 7% GDP growth in 2010. This year, we're growing more than 9%. I think it's like 9.7% 9, 9 growth year to date. Uh, and when we look at, at traffic also, uh, I think so far up to April, according to IATA figures, traffic in Latin America has grown 17%. Capacity has grown uh, something like 14%, by far the fastest growing region in the world. We've grown around 25% so far this year on 24% a more capacity. So a lot, of, a lot is happening in the, our part of the world. So going back to the whole thing about uh, bringing together countries in Latin America, bringing connectivity, and why narrow bodies are important, uh, over 70% of the city pairs we serve have each less than 20 passengers per day. So we're like bundling together uh, many small markets, markets that could not afford, could not merit non-stop direct service. These are markets that need a hub, and Panama is in the right position uh, to be that hub. But the only way we can serve those markets is what, with an uh, aircraft of the, of the correct gauge. We operate the 737-800s, uh, the 700s, and the Embraer 190s. Uh, but any, everything we have on firm order and every aircraft we've been receiving the past few years and years to come are 737 which also tells us a little bit about where, how, how our growth, uh, uh, in which direction our growth 